So I'm very pleased to introduce to you this morning the Honorable David Ferrario. Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to my house. It's nice to have you here. And we're really honored to have been selected as the venue for this uh, annual conference. And for those of you for, who are here for the first time, I hope you will have or have found some time to wander around the building, especially up in the rotunda, and stand in the presence of our founding documents. And I encourage you to visit the Lawrence F. O'Brien Gallery, where we have an extraordinary exhibit going on right now, Remembering Vietnam. The exhibit opened last Veterans Day and will close in January. And as a Vietnam veteran myself, I was determined to mark the 50th anniversary of the height of the war with an exhibition here at the National Archives. Our records, some recently declassified, continue to yield discoveries and provide insight and evidence for people seeking to understand the war. But as important as the National Archives records are, the most important part of this exhibit are memories we have captured in interviews. People on both sides of the Vietnam War telling the story from their own perspective. In his book, Nothing Ever Dies, Vietnam and the Memory of War, author Viet Tang Nguyen writes that wars are fought twice, once on the battlefield and once in memory. And that's what Remembering Vietnam is all about, so I encourage you to visit. The National Archives was created by legislation signed by Franklin D. Roosevelt in 1934 with the mission to collect, protect, and encourage the use of the records of our government so that the American people can hold their government accountable for its actions and learn from our past. The records start with the Oath of Allegiance signed at Valley Forge by George Washington and his troops and go all the way up to the tweets that are being created in the White House as I am speaking. Today that collection represents about 15 billion pieces of paper, 43 million photographs, miles and miles of film and video, and more than six billion electronic records so far, the fastest growing part of the collection. The records are housed in 44 facilities across the country. They include 13, soon to be 14 presidential libraries, starting with Hoover, Herbert Hoover in West Branch, Iowa. And among the most important of our facilities is the National Personnel Records Center in St. Louis, which houses the records of any civilian who worked for the federal, federal government, and about 100 million records of those who served in the armed forces. I'm very proud of my staff there and their commitment to serving our veterans. We provide access to military records, including personnel records, service treatment records, clinical records, retired from military hospitals, including inpatient and outpatient records for veterans and dependents. These records are often needed to pursue veterans' benefits, such as health care or a home loan guarantee. We verify and order replacement medals and awards. We research organizational records, such as morning reports or unit rosters, to try to find evidence of specific events, such as a combat-related injury, which would support the award of a Purple Heart. We provide expedited service on urgent requests, such as verification of service to support burial in a national cemetery or other recognition, such as an honor guard or flag at a private funeral. We also provide expedited service to homeless veterans who need to prove service to get into a shelter and veterans who have lost their records due to a natural disaster such as a hurricane. And we receive about 5,000 requests a day at that um, facility in St. Louis. And as a veteran myself, I'm particularly proud of this aspect of the role of the National Archives in service to the American people. Since this is a youth leadership summit, I've been asked to reflect on my own journey lessons learned along the way and advice I would give to the young people with us today. Growing up in Massachusetts, I was surrounded by reminders of our country's history and came of age during the John F. Kennedy presidency. And early influenced by his wor words, ask not what your country can do for you, ask what you can do for your country. As a, as a miserable education major, at the height of the Vietnam War, I dropped out of school and joined the Navy and volunteered for hospital service. My rationale being Navy, hospital, that's pretty safe. And how wrong could I be? 
my last year of my enlistment, I was assigned to First Marines in Da Nang and then ended up as a hospital corpsman on the USS Sanctuary, the hospital ship. Boot camp and hospital corps training at Great Lakes, psych training at, uh, here in Washington at Bethesda, where I learned lifelong skills that have served me well throughout my life. Um, I was a, trained as a psychiatric technician, so lis listening um, how to um, paraphrase, um, how to understand what's going on in people's minds were all part of the training that I got at Bethesda. But my core school training also, my medical training also came in very handy. I can still remove sutures, I can still do sutures, um, so I come in pretty handy sometimes um, when it's least expected. But most importantly, at boot camp, I can remember the moment when, I, when the um, instructor asked, can anyone in here type? So this group of 100 people, and I'm the only one who raised my hands, hand, and that opened doors. The fact that I could type meant that I got assigned to do things that other folks couldn't do. And it was kind of a lesson that I learned there that um, you should volunteer, you should take um, advantage of opportunities that arise to you because you never know how, what, what that's going to result in. The most important part of my takeaway in the, my Navy career, especially that last year, is a sense of perspective that um, working, uh, especially on the hospital ship where triage was very, um, very much part of our life. We were uh, 24 hours a day circling and taking on wounded from the field. Um, and I got an opportunity to work in triage where we did um, massive amounts of uh, sorting and learning how uh, to set priorities in, in terms of, of lives at risk. A perspective that, that has served me well throughout my career when people think the sky is falling, um, when a crisis is uh, to the point where people are uh, at each other's throats. My first question is always, is there a life at stake? So that sense of perspective is one thing that, that I learned uh, well there. So my, my first lesson to you is raise your hand, volunteer, get involved. So I came out of the Navy, finished my degree, did two more degrees while working in the MIT libraries where I was mentored by three extraordinary women who opened doors for me. Um, I progressed from shelving books to acting director of the library many years later. And I'm forever grateful to those women and have made sure they knew how important they were to my growth. Um, so another lesson there what it for, that I would pass on to you is um, say thanks. If there are people who have been important to you, make sure that you thank them as you're going along. I grew up in uh, academic research libraries, MIT Duke, and in 2004 was recruited to the New York Public Library. So the jump from academic to public libraries, um, different cultures, uh, scale very different, um, going from seven libraries to 91 libraries, going from a staff of 180 to a staff of 2,500. So the, the lesson there was, take a chance, get out of your comfort zone. If those chances um, are, are offered to you, do it. And in April 2009, I got a call from the White House, um, and they let me know that they were looking at me for Archivist of the United States, and that JFK quote resonance really came back to me. This was an opportunity to um, once again uh, give back. So. Um, that lesson I would impart to you is look for opportunities to, to give back. Applying everything I've learned about managing information in paper and electronic environments and connecting people with the information they need, creating an information literate society, that's, that was all in my background. So it was an easy decision to make to come um, and become the archivist of the United States and once more have an opportunity to pro provide service to my country. So take time and reflect on who you are and how you got to where you are. What have you learned along the way? Who has been key in that learning? So, so get to know yourself. So in summary, get involved, say thanks, take a chance, give back, get to know yourself. And let me leave you with Benjamin Franklin's charge. When leaving the Constitutional Convention, he was asked by a group of citizens, what kind of government have you created? to which Franklin replied, a republic, if you can keep it. So commit yourself to keeping the republic, and thanks for being in my house today.
Thank you.